James Farr. I'm from Huntington Beach, California, and I'm the Creative Development Director for Steelhouse Animation. Uh, I was homeschooled for the majority of my life uh, and went to, uh, in uh, 96 or 97, went to Rogers State University in Claremore. When I was 21, uh, the very first thing that I ever animated was something called My Pet Robot, and it was a flash animation um, on the internet. And it was a website for kids, and it had little flash games and a little uh, robot character that kind of bounced around and, and did things. And, and over the course of maybe six to eight months, I started actually getting fan mail, and parents were sending me uh, messages saying, Oh, we're, you know, we're from out of the country and this little character has helped uh, our children to learn to speak English and, and da da da. So I finally decided I would start sending it, just kind of shotgunning it out to different studios. And Film Roman actually called me back, the company that produced The Simpsons, and uh, had me out to Hollywood. My first, like, you know, Muppet movie Hollywood experience went in there and they picked it up the next day. So that was, at 21, I had a cartoon option. Sits in the basement and comes up with crazy ideas all day. Final Draft 7 for screenwriting. Uh, Macromedia Flash 8. I still use 8, I don't care. Uh, and probably uh, Autodesk Sketchbook. For prototyping characters. A typical day is uh, come in, have my donut, uh, and basically sit here in my little cave and write all day long. Joe Dante is a huge influence. Um, who uh, He's a, a film director. He directed the Gremlins and Explorers and uh, Small Soldiers, stuff like that. And uh, back in the 80s, probably the reason why I do this is I sent kind of an anonymous fan letter to uh, Warner Brothers on the back, you know, the address on the back of my Gremlins 2 VHS box and just kind of said, wow, you know, one day uh, I want to write movies and comics and do all these things and just never really expected a response, but it was just kind of a blind fan mail. And about maybe a month and a half, two months later, I get this huge box in the mail from uh, Warner Brothers. And it's from Joe Dante, and he's put in uh, scripts from all of his movies, annotated with sticky notes, um, autographs from everybody, original storyboards from all of his movies, also annotated uh, with a very kind letter that basically explained the filmmaking process and said, you know, here's all these things that we do on a daily basis. Um, befitting your status as like number one Gremlins fan in the universe, uh, here's a whole bunch of stuff for you and when you eventually do this for a living, come out and look me up. Uh, so, and that was when I was, I think, 13, so ever since then I've been kind of like trying to have a good excuse to call him up, and I'm actually going to meet him next month for the first time, so that only took almost 20 years. Neil Gaiman is a huge influence uh, on uh, a lot of the things that I do. Roberto Orsi and Alex Kurtzman, uh, Gindy Tartakovsky, Craig McCracken, uh, Sean Galloway, uh, one of the best character designers I've ever met in my life. Uh, I would really like to be able to fix my car. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on in there. Water. I can't swim. I grew up on the beach and I can't swim. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. I don't know, it might not have come out yet, actually. Um, there's a, there's a, an IP that I've developed that should be coming out next year, and just in terms of you know how difficult it was to structure and write, and how original I feel the concept is, it's probably the proudest I've ever been of anything. Halloween, uh, my next comic book is coming out. It's called Bella Lugosi's Tales from the Grave which is kind of like a, a love letter to the classic EC Tales from the Crypt, Vault of Horror comics. Only instead of the Crypt Keeper, it's Bela Lugosi, uh, the actor that originally did Dracula and, and all that kind of thing. 
Um, so uh, I have a story in Felga's Tale from the Grave that's coming out. Um, Deek Tiki and the Weeping Flame is my own personal IP that's coming out as a three issue comic one shot next year. Also working with um, the producer of The Ring, Dark Water, uh, The Grudge on uh, his next uh, American comic book property called Coil, so I'm writing all six issues of that for him. Uh, and uh, maybe the coolest thing that I'm working on is right here at Steelhouse, and that is a property called Don't Be Mad at Me Kevin, Rexodus, uh, which, uh, uh, the premise of which is dinosaurs did not die out, they just left the planet. So that is what I'm working on for Steelhouse right now. Zombie was my, um, that was kind of my follow-up to my pet robot after I uh, uh, kind of figured out how the development process worked and how you pitch things and, you know, what a pitch package actually is and how you approach a studio and, and go about getting something made. My follow-up to my children's IP was to do something a little more adult, maybe a little more teenage, the, the hot topic audience, uh, more or less and kind of aged up a little bit, and Zombie was my attempt to do that. My uh, big idea was that instead of uh, all the stupid humans running from the zombies and just dying in a random order, it would be way more interesting to get into the mind of the zombie and figure out why the zombies were actually doing what they're doing. Coil is a property created by Taka Chise, who is uh, the genius, one of the geniuses behind uh, Ring, Grudge, Dark Water, uh, all those awesome uh, you know, J-horror uh, ghost movies. So in an effort to, you know, th there's always the, the Japanese version, and then you have the American version, like with the eye and, and the grudge and ring, all of those. Um, they have a Japanese-American counterpart. So I am developing the American counterpart of his latest ghost IP, um, which I'm calling Coil. In Japan, they're gonna call it something else. Uh, so that's gonna be a six issue series that comes out hopefully next February. And I'm just uh, I'm just starting issue five actually. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep keep writing if you write. Keep drawing if you draw. Do it every single day. Um, stay focused. And um, don't expect somebody to come along and pick you up and give you a job and give you a break. Uh, what I would look for in an intern. Somebody that, uh, somebody that knows how to tell a story. Somebody that knows how to tell a story in a fun and engaging way, uh, and also understands the, uh, the uh, at least the American structure of storytelling, you know, what we've come to understand cinematically and, and expect cinematically. One of the greatest pitfalls is being positive that you're right. So if, you know, that's mutually exclusive from being able to, uh, you know, take a uh, take take control of an IP, take control of the story. But if you're not open to collaboration, if you're not open to other ideas that uh, may be just as good, if not better, than your own, then you're going to wind up with very stagnant material. So, um, being confident but open is uh, is key. Don't tell people what you're gonna do, show them what you're gonna do. Yes. Uh, if you spend a significant amount of time with any character, you just kind of, part of, part of writing, uh, uh, part of writing for a character is being able to hear that character, and the only way you can hear the character is to know them. So, um, once you know them, you kind of never stop hearing them, and uh, yeah, I'll definitely be in the grocery store and, and think of a line and have to text it to myself really fast, you know, and so it's, uh, it becomes increasingly organic and things come to you more easily the longer you spend time with, with a, a group of characters. The trick is to be able to kind of uh, generate something that, that could easily feel very homogenized, you know, um, but, but make it your own, put your own stamp on it and make it feel real. Um, so figuring out the balancing act of how to create something that is both marketable but also unique um, is, is pretty tricky. I'd be Professor X. 
because he's the most powerful superhero ever because he can make anybody do anything that he wants at any time that he wants. Like, if you don't like the cooking, be prepared to be a cook. So if you're gonna complain, go out and make something better.